There is a common mistake that many Christians have made when reading the story of the crucifixion in the Gospels. The mistake changes the whole story, and it occurs in Luke 23, 43, where modern translations say this, And Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Here is where the addition of a comma changes the whole theology of this verse. Here's what it really means. This is one of the most meaningful and intense parts of the whole Bible. Jesus has just been nailed to the cross in between two convicted criminals. The soldiers are gambling for his clothes, his enemies are mocking him, and one of the men hanging on the cross next to him says, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. The Bible says this man blasphemed Jesus by saying this, insinuating that his comment was meant to insult or mock Jesus. The other man hanging on the cross has a totally different heart. He responds to the other criminal and says, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. This criminal is sticking up for Jesus. When everyone is mocking him and he's feeling the weight of the sins of the entire world, in this agonizing place nailed to a cross, this man has faith in him. The man continues and addresses Jesus directly, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He calls Jesus Lord and that must have made the heart of Jesus almost burst to have this man appeal for salvation at that moment because it was for people just like this man that he had come. His understanding was that the kingdom Jesus had taught about would be in the future. That's why he said, remember me when you come. Now, the response of Jesus is what the most prominent of Bible teachers and preachers have gotten wrong, even the early translators of the Bible. Famous evangelist Billy Graham and almost every other Christian theologian and preacher make this same mistake, claiming that Jesus told this criminal on the cross that day, today, meaning Friday, that very day, that they would both be in paradise or heaven. Here is the actual quote in the Bible in Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, the way the grammar is used here, it would seem that Jesus is saying that today they would both be in paradise. Essentially, that as soon as you die, you go to heaven if you're good. However, that is not what Jesus is saying at all. First of all, this was originally written in Greek, and in Greek they don't use any punctuation. The placement of that comma was done by translators 1,500 years after it was originally written. If you take the comma that is placed before the word today and place it after, it changes the meaning of the whole thing. It would then say, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It changes the whole future of this situation. Where do people go when they die? Many people have placed the answer to this question solely on the location of this one comma. So the next logical question is this, was Jesus in heaven that Friday? Did he meet this thief on the cross in paradise later that day when both of them were dead? The answer to this question is that neither of them were in heaven later that day and we know that from scripture itself. In John 20, we see the story of the empty tomb. Jesus has been in the grave Friday night during the Sabbath, and it is resurrection morning on Sunday. Mary is standing outside the tomb crying, and two angels appear and ask her why she's crying. She says, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. She turns around and sees the resurrected Jesus standing there, but she doesn't recognize him. Finally, she recognizes him, and she must have reached out to hug or touch him. The response of Jesus answers our question as to where Jesus was or was not on Friday when he was talking to the thief on the cross about paradise. Jesus says this to Mary, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Where would the Father be? Paradise. Jesus plainly states that he didn't go there on Friday. He hadn't even been there on Sunday. Telling the thief on the cross that you go on living when you die would be contradicting his own words. 
Jesus called death sleep when referring to his friend Lazarus when he died. Lazarus didn't go to heaven when he died. He was dead for four days. Can you imagine him being in heaven and an angel tapping him on the shoulder and giving him the bad news that he has to go back down to this sinful world after enjoying paradise? Can you get eternal life and then get it taken away? Absolutely not. Just like Lazarus rested in the grave, Jesus rested in the grave until his special resurrection Sunday morning. The thief he promised salvation to is still resting in the grave, waiting on the resurrection promised to those who have remained faithful to him. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.5 that the living know that they shall die, but the dead don't know anything. Either this statement is true or it's false. Since it's in the Bible, I have to believe that it's true. So here's what Jesus would have said to that criminal nailed to the cross next to him. Assuredly, I say to you today, come, you will be with me in paradise. Someday when Jesus comes again and the dead are raised back to life, this forgiven criminal will see the Jesus he believed in coming to take him to paradise, just as he promised. The idea that the dead go on living after they die is one of the oldest pieces of misinformation spread by the father of lies. Back in the Garden of Eden, Satan, through the serpent talking to Eve, told this lie stating that if she ate of the forbidden fruit, she wouldn't die like God said. She would actually become more wise like God. This lie that we don't really die when we die has been told from generation to generation, and it completely contradicts the Bible. We are not immortal. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16, it says that only God has immortality. How much more plain could it be? Ecclesiastes 9, 5 says the dead don't know anything. Jesus calls death sleep. Only God is immortal. The dead are resurrected at the second coming. Over and over again, God guides us to the truth about what happens when we die. The danger of believing in the dead continuing to live is that we can fall for an old trick of the devil and think we can communicate with the dead, something the Bible expressly forbids. Check out this Bible verse. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 13 says, There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before your God. Why would God forbid us to communicate with the dead if they are saved and enjoying heaven? The only reason would be that it is the devil trying to deceive us. The Bible says that Satan can make himself look like an angel of light in 2 Corinthians 11:14, And the story of the witch of Endor in 1 Samuel 28 tells us definitively that contacting the dead is a sin and that Satan uses that method of deception to lead people astray. I'll link another video that I did on this topic in the description below. Be sure and check out that study as well. Knowing exactly what Jesus told the thief on the cross helps us know the truth about what happens when we die and what doesn't happen when we die. Jesus never told that thief on the cross that he would be in paradise that exact day. Even Jesus himself wasn't in paradise that same day. He told Mary that. Jesus told him that someday, according to his other teachings on the resurrection and second coming, that he would be raised back to life and enjoy paradise because of his decision to follow him and accept his grace and forgiveness. There are many Bible verses with promises of the resurrection and eternal life in heaven. We can believe that those verses are absolutely true and the timing of them are just as Jesus says. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. I'm so glad that the Bible helps us make sense of difficult verses when we study the entirety of Scripture. Just because someone has always said it doesn't mean that it's true. We are called to be students of the Bible and to find truth. If you would like to continue to study the Bible with me, be sure and subscribe to the channel and check out the videos I've already published. If you know someone who likes studying the Bible, be sure and share this channel with them so they can join as well. God bless you as you search for Bible truth. I'm Jamie Houghton.
with 832.